Hi, it's Lori Lambrecht here in the dining room of my house in Bridgehampton. Um, my whole house has become my extended studio during um, this crazy spring of 2020. So today I thought um, for a little inspiration session together with my friends over at Guild Hall, um, we might think about imagery of the visual nature um, combined with imagery of text. A little piece of paper cut up. Um, and um, I thought that it's interesting to think um, about the word image and um, how sometimes um, it's a physical thing, like a print, and sometimes it's just like really imaginary, like the way a word can bring um, an idea to your head. So um, with that in mind, I thought that I would ask some friends um, about a song that might be circling around in their head. And um, one of my friends suggested a song that she and her mom kept singing together while they drove the car, etc. And that's The Circle Game uh, by Joni Mitchell. So I've taken the lyrics, which I downloaded from Google, and um, I wrote them out uh, longhand on a piece of typewriter, or, you know, um, do we use typewriters anymore? Um, photocopy paper, and um, just wrote it out using a Sharpie because it's um, the tip is kind of bold and the black um, it could be really contrasty and show up well. So I've taken a photograph this morning. Uh, since the song is so much about the seasons, I woke up this morning and noticed that the dogwood tree outside my window was fully in bloom. So um, that's the image I'm going to use. And um, I already told you that the circle game are the lyrics I'm going to use. So you can use anything you want. Um, you could use um, a prayer um, or a love letter or whatever, okay? This is a kind of a thing we're gonna make, although the imagery is different, okay? So um, I just wanted to show you how words can create patterns, written words, the text, um, that can be used in any kind of visual thing that you're working on. And um, I think part of me really loves mysteries and trying to solve puzzles and things like that. And uh, when I was a kid, I loved to read Nancy Drew mystery books. And there were always secret codes and hidden maps and that kind of thing. And um, this is kind of in that realm of thinking. So um, I'm going to take your photograph. I happen to have chosen um, a vertical one. And I'm going to mark off the back of the page, um, the top area, just one inch straight across, horizontally across, zip, okay? We're gonna draw a line there, and then from there, I'm going to draw lines about an inch or three quarters of an inch, whatever you decide, down this way. And this piece of paper will end up being cut and has this kind of feathery look to it and um, but what I've done is because I've drawn this line here at the top for an inch that's where the cutting stops so that the sheet of paper still holds itself together with some kind of integrity that we can use in a sense it becomes its own loom okay so I'm going to work with it upside down so that you can kind of see what's going on I've uh, written out the text and um, Hopefully you can see this over here. I made um, half inch cuts across it. I kept the, the verse uh, consistent with the way it's written, but if you wanna mix it up to make a different kind of pattern, feel free to. So um, there's no right or wrong. This is really just about thinking and hopefully being inspired to do something that you haven't done before. Um, I myself don't work with words a lot, but it's definitely on my list of things I want to do. So um, 
doing this little exercise is a great way to start doing that. So what I've done there is I opened up every other um, little strip and now what I'm going and I'm pushing it all the way to the top and um, hopefully your cut is clean enough that all the way across it will line up evenly and so I pushed it all the way to that line where there is no cut at the top and now with the second sheet I'm just going to do the opposite of what I did before so whatever was over is now under and we're going to do that all the way across So there's so much metaphor to um, the idea of using text in a hidden manner. You know, it's like secret messages. I was very impressed with Madame Dufarge when I was a kid because I really loved to knit and I loved the idea that someone could be knitting in code during the French Revolution. And all sorts of languages have different ways of working with their script, um, whether they go up and down or left or right. And um, all these wonderful patterns are created. So there is a pattern that happens when you just do a basic weaving tabby, it's called, um, where things are alternated up and down, up and down, left. Um, as you go left and right. And so that becomes a really regular kind of dependable, not too much variation, except maybe the tension that you might use. But um, the text, the way it lays on the page, creates open space here and there. And that's kind of an interesting element. And just keep pushing these little edges all the way using your fingernails gently to push them up so you can start to see what we're doing. And I chose something really simple, just one, because it would be quick to do. And um, two, I think graphically it shows up better when it's contrasty like this. But you could um, write your text in a circular manner where you start at one edge and keep turning the page around and write your text sideways. Um, you could change the color of ink. You could change your paper color. I just wanted you to think about um, things a little bit differently. I, I've taught um, weaving workshops with Guildhall, and I really, really appreciate that. And I loved my students, and I'm really sorry that we're not together because of this isolation period that we're in. But um, I just wanted people to think, um, like, don't be limited on what you can use to weave with. Um, whether a lot of us are probably doing spring cleaning since we're kind of homebound anyway. You might find some really cool pieces of fabric to use. Um, you might find some old letters in your house that um, you know you don't have to worry about ruining the letter. You could just take a snapshot of it with your smartphone and um, print that out or make a scan on your desktop printer and um, do something with some maybe written material that has some meaning for your family. Maybe it's letters from your grandmother or something or postcards from great trips that you took 20 years ago. So I just want you to think, um, expand your thinking a little bit. Um, just, God, I find that exciting. Trying something new.
The materials I used were just two sheets of paper. One is printed with a photograph. One is handwritten with text of the lyrics to the song of your choice. And um, you might need a pair of scissors or um, something like an X-Acto knife and a cutting board and a metal straight edge to use as your guide. Otherwise, a pair of scissors will work that cut paper well. And um, maybe for the finishing touch, just might use some clear transparent tape, like scotch tape, um, that we'll just place on the back edges to um, hold the pieces in place when you're finished. Whoops, did you see what I just did? <laughs> I pulled it out. So I'd be curious to know what songs are going on in your head or that you gravitate towards during this period of time. And um, I think um, it'd be really fun if you shared what you made. And I think Gil Paul will provide you um, with a hashtag if you want to put it on Instagram or if you want to email it. So um, anyway, um, I don't have my tape with me right now, but what you would do is just tape, lay it down flat when you're finished and push the edges all towards the center a little bit. Um, you can see little air spaces uh, in between that maybe can get filled in by slightly shifting things and lining them up. So what I would do is just take regular tape and put it along these loose edges here to hold it in place around these three edges. And then um, it would hold it together. So this is what we made today. And um, you know, it, it could be folded in half and maybe it's a cover to um, a card you wanna send someone or I don't know, you can make other things. It's not really an object at this point in that, you know, we haven't made a placemat or something, <laughs> but you could. Um, anyway, I'm babbling. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for being part of our Art Break project. Please consider supporting Guildhall through subscribing to our YouTube page, following us on social media, or donating on our website. Your support would help us bring more creativity your way and ensure our success when we reopen our doors to you.